So let's be clear about that. Even the best that we are probably going to fail at achieving, trying to, well, we're not even trying to achieve it at the moment, but if we did, many people will die who have not had anything to do with that problem. We know that when we sit here today with the lights on, the projectors running, using power, that we'll be killing people to at two degrees. Some very large amount of carbon dioxide, a, ca a budget of something like, and it could be up or down a bit from this, so the usual caveats apply here with some uncertainties around this, but that's the sort of um, number of uh, tonnes of CO2. 5,000 billion tonnes of CO2 to be emitted sometime during this century. Now, if you apply, uh, um, think of that in terms of what, that's what comes out of the IPCC, latest reports in terms of carbon dioxide, uh, budgets and temperature, then we link that to four to six degrees C temperature rise. So we're looking towards very large temperature rises by the end of the century. Now, whether it's three and a half or whether it's five or six, we, we're not sure, and that, that uncertainty will remain. But it's a very high temperature increase by the end of the century. That is where we're heading at the moment. Um, and yet, for a likely chance of what we sign up to, what we keep telling the poor people of the world we're going to make sure we deliver for them, when we're being dishonest to them, um, we could only emit 1,000 gigatons. That's the most. In fact, that 1,000 gigatons taken from the IPCC report goes from 2011. We're in 2015. We've already used up about 15% of that budget since 2011. 15%. So we're already much lower than that. So recent support... Uh, recent um, history supports the view from the IEA, the International Energy Authority uh, Agency, um, that the CO2 trend is perfectly in line with a temperature increase of 6 degrees Celsius, which would have devastating consequences for the planet. Whether it's 4, 5 or 6, who knows exactly, but very large temperature increases, but certainly devastating consequences for the planet. Now, the IEA, who are not a, not a left-wing think tank, they are normally quite conservative in their views on these things, are speaking out very significantly on climate change. It's really worth reading some of the things that they're saying on climate change now. Um, so what about 2 degrees C? That's the 4 to 6 pathway. That's the 1,000 gigaton pathway for 2 degrees C. Look at the gap between those two, just an enormous. That's where we're, we're knowingly heading. We're all part of this, and that's where we know we have to go from the science, and that's where we keep telling other parts of the world we're going to try to achieve. The problem with that, and as an engineer this is quite depressing in some respects, is that this part at the beginning, where we are now, is too early for low carbon supply. You cannot build your way out of this with bits of engineering kit. And that is quite depressing, because that leaves us with the social implications of what do we have to do otherwise. But I want to just want to test that assumption. Just think about this. There's been a lot of discussion, I don't know about within Iceland, but in the UK, quite a lot of environmentalists have swapped over saying they think nuclear power is the answer, or at least one of the major answers to this. And I'm, I remain agnostic about nuclear power. You know, it's very low carbon, 5 to 15 grams of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour, so it's, it's similar to renewables and 5 to 10 times lower than carbon capture and storage. So nuclear power is very low carbon. It has lots of other issues, but it's very low carbon. But let's put a bit of perspective on this. We, c we, totally c we consume in total about 100,000 terawatt hours of energy around the globe. So just a very large amount of energy, lots of energy, for those of you that are not familiar with these units. <laughs> um, global electricity consumption is about 20,000 terawatt, hour, terawatt hours, so 20% of lots of energy. So that's our electricity. Nuclear provides about 11.5% of the electricity around the globe, of what we consume, of, of our final energy consumption. So that means nuclear provides about 2.5% of the global energy demand about 2.5%. That's from 435 nuclear power stations to provide 2.5% of the world's energy demand. If you wanted to provide 25% of the world's energy demand, you'd probably need something in the region of three or 4,000 new nuclear power stations to be built in the next 30 years. Three or 4,000 new nuclear power stations to make a decent dent in our energy consumption. And that assumes our energy consumption remains static, and it's not, it's going up. We're building 70. So just to put some sense on this, you hear this with every technology, whether it's wind, wave, tidal, CCS, all these big bits of technology, these are going to solve the problem. You cannot build them fast enough to get us away from the fact that we're going to blow our carbon budget. And that's a really uncomfortable message, because no one wants to hear that, because the repercussions of that are that we have to reduce our energy demand. 